and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive. He's alive. He's the Alpha and Omega. The first and last is He. The curse of sin is broken, and we have perfect liberty. The Lamb of God is risen. He's alive, he's alive, hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Hosanna in the highest, let us
Father, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you. We say that you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, you are mighty Lord. This morning we bless your holy name, we say there is no God like you. There is no one that can be compared to you. You are great and greatly to be praised. We are here to celebrate you, Lord. We are here to magnify your holy name. We are here to lift you up because you are God. We thank you, Lord, that you died and you rose again for us. And that's why we come to celebrate and say that, Jesus, you are highly exalted. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we believe and pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 62, verse 6 says, My soul waits in silence for God alone, because my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and salvation. My stronghold, I won't be moved. My safety and honor rest on God. My strong rock and refuge are in God. Trust in him, people at all times. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. It's a joy to be alive, and it's a joy to see this resurrection day. And we want to thank you for the sacrifice that was offered at the cross of Calvary by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you because today he is highly exalted, seated at the right hand of the Father. And at the mention of his name, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. On this resurrection day, we want to crown Jesus Christ the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We bow before him and we declare Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Father and our God, as we come before you on this resurrection day, Lord, we come in jubilation, we come in celebration for what you have already done for us. We thank you because the power of death, hell, and the grave has already been broken. And Father, we want to thank you because today you possess, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he possesses the keys of life and the keys of death. And so Father, we want to lift up your name higher than every situation, higher than every circumstance that would wish to bring us down at such a time as this. We want to crown and exalt the name of Jesus Christ high and above every situation and circumstance. We present our needs before you this morning. Specifically, Lord, we want to pray for every family that has been affected not only in this nation, but also in the nations of the earth. We bring them before your throne of mercy this, uh, this morning. And Lord, we want to pray for your healing upon their lives. We pray that at such a time as this, you will comfort, you will strengthen, you will uphold the families of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. And any situation in our lives that looks as if it has died, it looks as if it's going down, we want to pray for your resurrection power to come upon us, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we come before you, we want to call upon your name. And as we have read from the book of Psalm, we want to declare that our hope is only found in you. You are our refuge. You are our point of safety. You are our point to run to, Lord. Because the Bible says your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Lord, we run to you because God, just the same way Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, Lord, it gives us hope to believe that even what we are going through now, oh God, shall come to pass and we shall see light, we shall see resurrection, we shall see your greatness and your power on the other side, oh God. And so we continue to focus our eyes on you, just the same way that the eyes of a servant look to the master, and the eyes of a mistress look 
look to her uh, 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 servant, look to the mistress. Lord, we look up to you, Lord, that you will see us through. You will come through in our situations, in our circumstances, economically, health-wise, and in every way, Jehovah. And we shall see your resurrection power at work, O God. And so we want to ask you, Jehovah, that you will see us through, you will come through for us, and Father, we shall see your greatness and your power manifested, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to continue to do. And Lord, we continue to focus and put our hope in you and you alone. Thank you, Father, for the things that you're able to do. Thank you, Father, that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or even imagine. For it's in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hello, I bring you greetings wherever you are, and I pray that the Lord has continued to watch over you and that his hand is upon you, upholding you, and you know, strengthening you in this difficult season and time. We are grateful that we are celebrating the Resurrection Sunday. This is the day that we celebrate the rising of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus resurrected on the third day and Jesus ascended into heaven. So this day we remember the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So before we go into our sermon, I just want us to pray and we will read God's word. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for an opportunity to share your word with your children scattered across this nation. Father, I commit them to you even as we remember your resurrection because your resurrection has power, it gives us strength and hope. It gives us joy. It gives us hope to look forward into our own resurrection, dear Lord. So Father, as we start up this service this morning, I commit myself to you that, dear Lord, you will speak through me and that, Lord, your word will come with power and that many people will be touched and impacted because of the resurrection power. And I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, and amen, and amen. So if you can turn with me your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. This is what the Bible says. It says, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearing was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, and they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then... Go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him clubs his feet and worshipped him. The f the, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. That is God's word. What a joy it is that this day we remember Jesus has risen. So we are entitling our conversation this morning, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He is not dead. He is alive today. You know, we say that he is the same yesterday, today, and he's the same forever. We say this because others have died and they have never resurrected. In fact, the person Jesus resurrected was Lazarus. But Lazarus was basically resuscitated into life, which meant that Lazarus would later on die again. But our Lord Jesus resurrected once and for all time. And he took into himself an amazing body that can never perish again. So what does resurrection mean really? Resurrection is coming back to life. You are dead, 
you come back to life and you take on an immortal body yet a physical body an immortal body yet a physical body that is the body jesus had it was immortal it is physical it could be seen touched felt that is how wonderful the restoration means so i want you to picture i'm sure you have been at home you know throwing papers into your dustbin at home picture it this way the dustbin is full of papers those papers are trash that trash can be taken into a recycling somewhere can be taken into a processing somewhere and out of it can come something useful like a tissue paper something useful that can be used tomorrow and especially for this season where we are in right now we are in a season where we need a lot of tissue papers people require tissue papers to wipe their hands so picture the trash that is in your dustbin right now that the same can undergo a recycling process the, the same can undergo a transformational process to come out to something that is very useful that is how restoration looks like it is the transformation of the physical body that is decaying that is sinful that is trashy so to speak into an immortal body that can never die again and that is what jesus christ received now this is the beautiful hope of this resurrection resurrection is indeed the beautiful hope that believers have and i'm praying that you have the same same hope the same same hope in the text that we have read this morning we see so many times it is being repeated jesus is risen so resurrection means rise up it actually comes from two greek words one anastemis and another one called eregoi anastemis means to rise up Anastemis, aregoi means to wake up. So it's basically rising up, waking up, and being st standing strong and being alive. So the thing is, resurrection is the beautiful hope that believers have today, that they will see tomorrow. And this is what this story tells us this morning. It tells us because our Savior is resurrected, then we too will also resurrect. When our time on earth come and go, we too will resurrect. Paul will tell the people of Corinth. He tells them, you see, if our hope of resurrection, if our hope in Christ is only for this life that we are living in today, then we are of of all people on earth to be pitied. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19. We ought to be pitied because if our hope in this world, it is for this life only, then we must be pitied. Our hope in Christ should be beyond the life that we are living today. Our hope in Christ should be beyond the life that we have right now. And that is why he said that we cannot therefore look like the people of the world. Because the people of the world, their hope is on this life to succeed, to get great things that they are looking for. But for you and for me, who is a believer and a follower of Christ, we have a different thing to hope for. What is that? Life after death. Life after dying. Life after passing from this world. So it's a joyful thing. It's a joyful thing to know that as a believer, you will resurrect tomorrow. So resurrection is really a fact in history. It's a fact of history. It really happened. And that's why we are recording this, we are reading this today. It's a fact of history that the resurrection of Jesus Christ happened. And I want to read us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to tell us the facts of that history. The facts of that history. So 1 Corinthians 15 tells us from verse 1, no, brothers and sisters, I want, to, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand on. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass on to you as a first, as a first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that Christ was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. That is the key point. That's the beautiful gospel. Gospel says that Christ died, that he was buried, that he rose on the third day as in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas. He appeared to Peter. The first person he appeared to was Peter. Peter saw Jesus Christ as he was going to the tomb. He saw Jesus Christ. And then he appeared to the 12 disciples. He appeared to more than 500 brothers. He appeared, he appeared to those you know, to those who had already fallen asleep, some of them had fallen asleep, the brothers, family brothers, they had already fallen asleep. He appeared to James, he appeared to the apostles, and also appeared to one man, Paul. 
He appeared to Paul. So this resurrection story is a fact in history. We are certain Jesus resurrected. You see, that's a beautiful difference that we have with other, other religions in the world because they don't believe in resurrection. For us, we believe that Jesus Christ resurrected. So what does it mean to believe us? What does it mean for you, a follower of Christ Jesus? What does it mean to you? It means that you don't need fear life after dying. You would not, you're not going to live fearing what will happen to me when, I, when I'm gone out of this world. What it means for you now that we have hope in Christ and that hope in Christ does not disappoint. It will never disappoint you. The hope that you have in Jesus Christ will never disappoint you. You see, if you believe in resurrection, this is what you will be doing. You will believe that and trust that the best is yet to come. You will believe that the best is yet to come, that you live and long for the day that even you, you will be delivered from this body. This body that is sinful, this body that is suffering, this body that is decaying. You will live believing that the best is yet to come. And that your body, even though it is sinful and suffering, will be resurrected and will receive the power that Jesus Christ will inject into. We are told this in the book of, in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. This is what the Bible says. Philippians 3 verse 20 encourages us about the joy of resurrection. Philippians 3 20, this is what the Bible says. It says that, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we are eagerly awaiting a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Can you imagine? That is what will happen. Because we have our citizenship in heaven, we can therefore hope, eagerly awaiting, that our bodies will be transformed to be like his transformed body. You know, this week we had a conversation with my wife and I was just wondering, you know, what will the resurrected bodies look like? You know, we debate us so much and we're wondering, will it look like the bodies that we have today? And, you know, as we were thinking about it, we imagined that the, the guys who are walking uh, up to Emmaus, those two brothers who were walking, they couldn't recognize Jesus. They couldn't recognize him. Was Jesus looking like the same Jesus who had died? Was he the same, same person in terms of, you know, looks? But we are certain that he had the hands. We are certain that he had the legs. He had eyes. He was looking like a human being. What we don't know is whether he looked like the same person who had, who had died in terms of exact printing. So even in, as, we deba as we debated about it, what was so comforting to us is, for certain, we will resurrect. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you believe in him, for certain, you will resurrect. For certain, you will not rot or perish forever. No, 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 no. You will receive an immortal body, which that body will be a glorious body, like our Savior, Jesus Christ. That body, it interests me, it was able to pass through the walls. Jesus could pass through the walls. That body cannot die again. It is not a resuscitated body, like the one for Lazarus that had to die again. This body is a wonderful body. So we want to declare this day that Jesus Christ is alive, that he is risen like we are being told in that text. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus has risen again. And because he is risen again, we don't need to worry because he is assuring us. You see, the joy is that because Jesus resurrected, we no longer have to have contention with unbelievers because the story of resurrection is a big contention between believers and unbelievers across the world. They're wondering, these guys are insane. We're not making sense to them. That's the difference. The difference is they have no hope. The difference you and I have is that we have hope in Jesus Christ that we will come back again. So the story we read continues to tell us that Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen from the dead, just like he had promised that he will rise again. But the beautiful thing that he makes there is that he say the angel told the disciples, do not be afraid. And Jesus repeated the same thing, do not be afraid. So the message we bring to you this morning is that because of Jesus' resurrection, believers are not afraid. So I want you not to be afraid. Even though the world is going through a very difficult season right now, you may be tempted to be afraid. You may be tempted to be fearful. But like we were discussing with my brothers just during the day today, that what better thing for you and I, brother and sister, than for us to die in Christ. 
for us to live for Christ. For like Paul says, for me to die is gain. But to live, it's Jesus Christ. I live for Christ, I die for him. What a joy it is. But you see, we ought not to be afraid and fear death. You see, believers have a beautiful thing. We don't fear death. Believers not fear dying. Because when our eyes close here on earth in death, they open up to the glorious victory and see the Lord in the eternal glory. That is the beautiful thing. That when your eyes close like this, they open up into the beautiful glory that is in Christ Jesus. Is that your hope? Is that your hope that when your eyes close here, that they open into the eternal glory that is to come? If that is not your hope this morning, I pray that you can look to Jesus, the resurrected Savior, the Jesus Christ whom we worship today, and turn to him, ask him to come into your heart. And he's indeed going to resuscitate your body, to resuscitate you and bring me back to life. Cause you back to life. Because anyone who does not believe in Christ Jesus, he is dead. He is not alive. He is a walking corpse. But the one who believes in Jesus Christ has been brought to life. That is the joy of resurrection. That anyone who believes in Jesus Christ has been brought back to life. He is alive and alive forevermore. Just like Jesus told um, in the story of Lazarus, he says that I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. And he says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, he will resurrect again tomorrow. Even though he dies, he will resurrect again tomorrow. So have hope in Christ and believe in him. So Jesus tells the disciples now, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. So the Jesus we talk about is a Jesus who is walking. He can be seen visibly. So you're not doubting his presence. He is present in your life. He is present in my life. You can see him. You can see him visibly. So I pray that you are seeing Jesus even in this season of darkness in the world. The world is undergoing through a very dark moment. But I pray that even in dark moment, that dark moment, Jesus Christ will make himself known to you. The resurrected Savior empowered the disciples. He empowers the followers of Jesus Christ. He empowers you. I pray that Jesus Christ will empower you just like he did to Peter. When Jesus resurrected, he didn't send that back Peter into his leadership position. And Peter was able to lead through the first church, the early church. And he did it so marvelously because of the empowering power that Jesus had given to him. The resurrected Savior empowered John. He empowered John to the very end of his life until he wrote the book of Revelation. That was the resurrected Savior empowering his, his, his disciple. The resurrected Savior empowered Paul in amazing ways. We saw when Paul was going into Damascus, the resurrected Savior appeared to him and he called him into ministry. That calling was so powerful and the Bible says that Paul was not disobedient to the voice of heaven. The voice was so strong that he could not disobey it. So we are saying this morning that the resurrected Jesus Christ is able to empower you to do the work of ministry. He is therefore calling you and I this morning to be witnesses of his gospel, to tell the world about him. And he's empowering you to tell the world about him everywhere and in every place to every man so that every man can be reached out to. God is calling you and I today to be witnesses of his gospel, to witness the resurrection power. Because the resurrection power is within you. That power that caused him to resurrect from the dead is alive in you this day. And I want to encourage you, even as you sit down listening to this voice, may the Lord resurrect the things that could have died in your life. May the Lord resurrect the hope that was dying in your life. May the Lord, may the Lord resurrect that idea that was going away. May the Lord lift you up, resurrect you up so that indeed you can be able to do great and mighty things for his kingdom. The Bible says that call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know of. This is a season to call upon God and show and experience the showing of the mighty things that we never knew of yesterday. God is calling you and I to live that life, the life that has experienced resurrection. Has your life been touched by Jesus? Has your life been touched by this Jesus? Jesus is alive, he is risen, and he is with you this morning. As you listen to my voice this morning, I pray that you are experiencing the power of resurrection. And as you experience his power of resurrection, may he touch you and cause you to grow in the power of his name. 
And as I close this morning, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the resurrected Savior strengthens believers of today by faith. He strengthens believers of today by faith. What to do? To witness of his glory. To witness of his gospel. Would you stand up where you are right now and just sing of the wonderful glory of our gospel? Sing of the wonderful glory of our gospel. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Will you stand up where you are and just lift up those hands and worship him because he's a, res he's a resurrected savior. The Bible says, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus came in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he. Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. We are declaring Hosanna, Hosanna because Jesus has resurrected. He has defeated death, sin, and his power and given you grace to stand where you are. And as we pray, I pray that the touch of the Holy Spirit will be with you as you enjoy the resurrection power. So Father, I thank you so much for this moment. A moment just to briefly talk about the resurrection power. I pray, Father, that as we have talked shortly about the resurrection power, that you will cause your children wherever they are, O oh God, to experience the power of resurrection. The resurrection power gives grace, strength, and power to believers. The resurrection power gives hope to the followers of Jesus Christ. What is that hope? That even us, we will resurrect tomorrow. Even us, we will live to see Jesus Christ. Even us, we will experience the immortal bodies. Even us, we will experience the physical bodies that have resurrected. Oh yes, Jesus, I thank you for this revelation. The revelation of resurrection power is what many long to see. The ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob long to experience this wonderful resurrection story, but he never saw it. Yet, dear Lord, we who have believed in you, we believe that this story happened. And we are saying it's a fact of history, that it indeed happened. And because of the statement of our faith, dear Lord, this morning, we believe that Jesus Christ is resurrected in the physical body and he ascended into heaven in the physical body. And because of that ascension into heaven, he is standing this day and he is making prayers, interceding for us, his children. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you so much. Father God, if there is anyone who is listening to me this morning, who do not have a personal relationship with you, who is doubting the resurrection story, Father God, I pray that you will stretch forth your hand unto them. So that, Father God, as they live their life enjoying the resurrection, may they know, oh Father, that, Lord, indeed there is no need to fear dying. Because when we believe in resurrection, there is no need for us to fear death. When we believe in resurrection, we live in hope. We live in truth. We live expecting that better things are yet to come for us. What are those better things yet to come for us? Indeed, the enjoyment of resurrection story. I pray, O oh Lord, that you'll continue sustaining your children wherever they are. May the power of God rest with them, O oh dear Lord. May you encourage them, even in this difficult season and time. May they be encouraged and upheld. May they not give up, dear Lord. May they not be afraid like this scripture tells us. May we not be afraid, dear Lord. May we live to enjoy the goodness of our God in the land of the living. And this is my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hosanna, hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, amen. Child of God, I greet you again. And I pray that God has continued to bless you and to watch over you wherever you are and continue to sustain you. And the Bible says that he will sustain us. So even in this sustaining grace, there are many among us in the body of Christ who are suffering in one way or another. God has asked us to give generously. You see, there is wonderful blessing in giving. When we give, we receive back. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, that give and it will be given back to you. A good measure that is pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing, running over. You see, that giving can be again put into your laps when you give faithfully. Although it was thinking about the forgiveness, the joy of forgiveness, it again reflects the wonderful gift of giving of your resources. So I want to encourage you to give faithfully to the church of God. 
Give faithfully to the judge of God. Whatever God has put in your heart to give, of your tithes and offerings, give faithfully. There is a wonderful joy in giving. See, David says that I will not go into God's house empty-handed. It's not a beautiful thing to enter into his house empty-handed. So even as you enter entered into this wonderful Resurrection Sunday, I pray that you are entering into it with something in your hand, something to give into God's people. So we have food bank that we are collecting. We are trying to raise as much uh, support as we can to assist our people who possibly are struggling to, to get food. So please give. Give of your foods. Give to support this food bank that we have. Give also of your tithes and your offerings. Because this is an opportunity, this is a season that you can actually plug into, tap into, to reap the benefits of it. Because when things are low, you can actually be able to reap the wonderful things. Why? You remember Isaac? Isaac himself, he reaped when things were going low. Everyone was complaining. But because he gave himself faithfully to God, he was able to reap powerfully. On your screen, you can see the pay bill number. You can see our bank account. Please give using those channels, and the Lord is going to bless you. Please give, and the Lord is going to bless you. There is a lot of joy in giving, and you never get tired in giving into his kingdom. So may the Lord bless you. May he increase you beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen.